Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. I have been wanting to make this video forever, I just didn't really know uh, when to do it, whether I should really do it, how to do it, how to approach this whole thing. But in the past I shared a detail about my life, which I didn't discuss very much in detail, although it is a very tragic loss that had a major impact on my life journey, including my decisions regarding belief and disbelief. I always felt like I have to talk about it and I want to talk about it because it is personally very important to me. It matters. I think it matters to the world. It matters to my aunt. It is also culturally relevant. I want to talk about my aunt who was very close to me and who was killed on November 23rd, 2009 by her then husband, separated husband, in the middle of the street in broad daylight in Germany. Contrary to her very conservative family, to her very conservative uh, father and her very religious brothers, including my father, she was a very free-spirited woman. She wanted to live independently, explore life. She had a very good job. She was educated. She was curious about the world and cultures. The relatives often disapproved of her actions severely because of things like having a German non-Muslim boyfriend and bringing him home, introducing him to the family, which then everybody has to somehow conform to. I don't know, I always loved how <laughs> she just uh, does what she wants to do, what she thinks is right. And at the same time, she's very kind and she wants to help people, not break anyone's heart. In 2009, I was in Turkey in high school. I was uh, interested in politics. I was a socialist with very uh, communist revolutionary ideas, lots of crazy stuff. That was probably a result of uh, me being so um, rebellious toward how Turkey is and how I didn't like Turkey at all. And I was in contact with her very much and she always appreciated how much I care about things, but she also really disapproved of my political fanaticism. <laughs> in 2009, especially in the second half of 2009, I had a lot of contact with my aunt. In fact, I still have some emails. I put them into a special folder. I just, I never wanted to lose them. We would message back then, I think, on this messenger called the MSN Messenger. Do you people remember that? <laughs> MSN? Around those times, in 2008 and 2009, my aunt, who was a very free-spirited woman, as said, had this desire, this aspiration to finally settle down and live a more peaceful life. Around those times, she told me a lot that she uh, finally wants to be happy now. She doesn't want to be rejected by her family all the time. She wants to uh, find somebody to marry, to build a family with, to be happy with. And she found this guy from Turkey, from the south of Turkey, online. Some man who was, who claimed to be a rather religious, traditional man. And my aunt was very naive about this. She decided to meet him in person, to spend some time with him, and then she quickly decided to get married because she thought this is a very good guy, a very nice guy. We should live together in Germany. Her family and all the relatives didn't approve of that either because they thought that she was just uh, acting irresponsibly and she should just conform to how they live and she should just let them find a proper husband for her and then just get married and live together with with the relatives and do they do everything that they do she wanted to go her own way she married that guy brought him to germany they lived together but things went very bad very quickly apparently the guy turned out to be quite abusive especially psychologically abusive Apparently, he kept telling her that she's not supposed to go to these uh, work gatherings, not to talk to people online, not to greet this person, not to greet that person, and all that. And she thought, hey, you know what, this doesn't work. Apparently, she tried to talk, it didn't change, the guy was just justifying his behavior and became even more abusive. And then one thing happened, and she contacted me immediately after that happened. She was apparently sitting at her computer and was playing a... A mini game on one of these messengers. She was playing this mini game with random people, you know, randomly assigned people in a room. And in that room, there were several people for, with, with different names, including uh, male names. And apparently he came in that day and uh, looked at her, looked at what she's doing at her computer and told her to stop playing games. And she just asked what his problem is, that she's just playing a random game with random people. And then he apparently made 
Accusations called her a whore. She yelled at him. He yelled back, started becoming physically threatening. Told her that she's not allowed to play online games anymore and to communicate with people anymore. And she just said, you don't have any right to do anything like this. Who the hell are you? And apparently he went away and then came out, rapidly walking toward her very, very violently. She then ran to her bathroom and locked herself into the bathroom, called the police. The police came in and uh, took the guy away. Then she immediately filed a complaint and filed a restraining order. And from that day, uh, he was not allowed to um, get close to her anymore. She told me about this. She said that he said very bad things like, uh, I will kill you. I will, I don't know, I don't want to go into detail, but I will uh, kill you. I will take your life. I will beat you up. I will make your face unrecognizable. I will kill your parents. And I know my grandparents, her parents, were, um, my grandfather ne ne needed some medication at the moment. He needed some care and she was taking care of them. This incident happened, but she told me that I'm not supposed to tell anyone about this. I'm supposed to keep this to myself. She asked me, she begged me, she said, do not tell anybody about this. Don't worry, nothing will happen. He's just bluffing. He did this before. The police is taking care of him now. He's not allowed to come closer to me anymore. He's going to a different place. Everything will be fine. Please don't tell anybody because the family is already mad at me. They are already treat me like trash. And if they find out about this, they will just, they will bother me again. Please, I can't take that right now. So I didn't. I listened to her. I didn't tell anybody, I kept it to myself. And I blamed myself for that after everything uh, developed. At those times, she texted a lot with me and she uh, complained a lot about her brothers and her relatives, my relatives, about the family. I will probably be told, uh, and when I publish this video, I will probably be told to take this video down. Not only because they are personally offended, but also because they think putting my aunt out here and talking about her would be disrespectful to her, which they have no idea about. Suddenly they will act like they care about her when they have forgotten her long ago. She was complaining to me and she was basically uh, talking about how relatives and siblings are so selfish, incapable of understanding differences, incapable of having proper empathy, how they are so unhelpful and such strangers that she would love to go on a journey with me sometime and to find different relatives, different people that we have something in common culturally, see if they are maybe better than these relatives. Of course, I found that so special, so nice at the time because I thought, hey, we're doing something nice, something so interesting, something that matters to her and she's involving me in this. This was toward the end of uh, 2009. There was a time where uh, we didn't talk very much for a while. She was very busy. She told me that she went on a trip for work to set up different things. I was curious how she's doing where she was. I contacted her again. We talked a little bit and she said uh, she sounded so happy. She uh, said that the guy is gone. He's he, he lives in a different place now. He will probably have to leave the country because he's only there in Germany because he married her. And she was telling me that um, that she's now creating, that she's now building a new life. She's moving to a new place. Her job has become much better. She's making new decisions. And she told me that she wants to share a lot of new things with me and that we will soon talk more in detail. And then one day in school, I had a bad headache. I asked for permission to go home. I said, I'm sick. They gave me permission. I left, went home. In the afternoon, I took a nap. I, I woke up from a long nap and I felt just awful, confused. I went to the living room. I remember my mother was sitting there and she was sitting in front of the laptop, which was very strange because she doesn't really do that. And she was crying. Her She had tears in her eyes. And I asked her what's, what, what's, what's going on. And she just said, uh, your, your aunt. And I asked... I was surprised. I didn't know what she was talking about. I was just confused. And I said, w what about my aunt? And um, <laughs> she said she's been shot. And you know how you react when you, uh, when, you when you are shot, when you hear something. I, I, uh, I, I said, I asked her if she was joking. And she said, uh, how, could I, how could I joke about this? 
and I saw it in her face. And she said they called her and told her. And she said it's also on the internet. And I sat down quickly next to her and saw some uh, news reports. I feel like I was I was in a I was in a shock. I didn't really I wasn't I I couldn't deal with the fact that this is reality. I went to my room, went to my own computer, quickly looked up reports, and they were all there. Man shoots wife in the open street. Man kills separated wife. Apparently that animal planned this. He went back to the town. He was sitting in a cafe across from a pharmacy, which she would visit to pick up medication for her parents. And then she went out and they had a brief exchange. Nobody knows what was said. And then he pulled out his gun and shot at her numerous times. We had some clearer details. Um, I think he shot 12 bullets and hit her in the face more than three times. And then he shot himself in the head. She was immediately dead. He did not die. He uh, was in a coma for five days or so. And then he died. That was the first time in my life that I was genuinely happy that somebody died. But for, for years to come, I kept, for especially the first few days, but, and, but then for weeks and months and years, I kept reimagining or I kept involuntarily picturing. I, I, w I would picture her standing there in fear in front of this guy. When she sees his gun, I thought about her face and how kind her face is and how loving she is. And I just thought about how he shot her in the face several times it may be a little bit it may be a little bit unspeakable but i thought if if that guy survives i would i would want to personally go there and punish that guy so i'm glad that he just died and relieved us from himself and you know what's so disturbing to me when she was dead all the people who condemned her and rejected her and turned their back on her her relatives who were so careless and so arrogant so lacking of empathy suddenly acted like they cared so much they suddenly acted like like their world fell apart they immediately started acting they immediately tried to make it all about themselves they immediately tried to be the main actor in what just happened and it just disgusted me so much because of uh, all the things that she said to me for months. And I was the only person. I was only 18 years old and she was 31. And I was the only person that she had any genuine close contact and relationship with from among all her relatives and siblings, her family, except her parents. And they came out acting like this is all about them. <laughs> And they blamed it on how, how free-spirited she is and how she does what she thinks is right. They didn't blame it on the culture of this guy. They didn't blame it on the Muslim culture of this guy, on the traditionalism of, the, of this uh, sick culture. I will not say that, that what this guy did, that shooting her in the middle of the street was something Islamic, that this is something that Islam orders or allows or anything like that no that's not what i'm going to say but i will say that this is inspired by muslim culture it is an integral part of muslim culture to treat women like this to act like as a man it is your right to have women and to be pleased by them and it is your right to be an authority over a woman when you have a woman and it is your right to discipline her to tell her what she can and can't do and to threaten her if she doesn't listen it is part of this culture to treat women like shit who are supposed to be quiet and just listen not put themselves out there not expose themselves too much not laugh too loudly not speak too loudly be shy and just do what the man says get married shut the hell up and just listen it is part of this culture to say you are not allowed to have a male friend to go to gatherings and it is part of this culture and this religion to say if you do not listen to me i will beat you and you know what it is part of this tradition to be wild, to feel brutal about this. 
Do you know that there is actually a hadith in which Muhammad says, and this is supposed to be a proud, a good hadith, which, which Muslim men are supposed to feel proud about. There is a hadith in which uh, one of the fellow companions of Muhammad says that if he ever sees his wife with a, another man, then he will immediately take out his sword and behead that man. And Muhammad then reacts to this and says something like, uh, are you surprised by his uh, jealousy? There is a word in Arabic called uh, ghayra, which um, doesn't really have a proper translation, but it translates basically to jealousy or protective jealousy. And Muhammad says, are you surprised by his jealousy? I tell you, I am even more jealous than him, and Allah is even more jealous than I am. So he doesn't disapprove of this vigilant violence. No, he justifies it. And he says that he is even better or worse. And this is the mentality. Ask people, ask people in Muslim culture what they would do if their wife cheated on them. Ask them what they would do if they suspected their wife cheating on them. Ask them what they would do if they suspected that their daughter or their wife or whatever it is, that they engage in questionable uh, relationships and activities. Ask them what they would do. This is part of Muslim culture and it is disgusting. What is so stupid is that I didn't even realize this back then. My aunt was killed in 2009. We buried her and I spent an hour sitting there at her grave and just crying and trying to speak to her, thinking she would hear me. And guess when I decided to radically change myself and become religious? At the beginning of 2010, just a few months later. This was traumatic to me, it was horrible to me, but I also thought about things that she said to me, how she was exploring uh, religion, she was exploring a more uh, peaceful life and all that. And although I didn't consciously think that I did this because of her, I think it is pretty clear to me that her death and all the things that we talked about together influenced me and made me change myself. And I analyzed my political uh, ideas and beliefs in my own life more critically compared it to uh, religion, which I respected, although I never really uh, practiced it that strictly before. And I decided that my life and my uh, political ideas and all that are in contradiction with my religious beliefs, which I am quite aware of. And so I decided to throw it all away and to dedicate myself completely to religion. And I became extremely religious. And I tried to live that way, not realizing that I turned toward that exact thing which caused everything to be horrible, that exact thing which made everything so dangerous, so terrible. And it took me years, many years to go through research, days and nights of reading and thinking and dissecting to conclude that I am on a very wrong path because I am believing in something that I have no reason to believe in, following something that I could not possibly morally agree and when I left my belief, all I wanted to do was to speak to her again and share with her everything that I think, to just uh, listen to what she has to say, and just exchange my views with her, just exchange ideas with her. And when I decided to speak out, to, to do something, to change something in the world, I kept thinking about how she would, what she would think about this. I often still think about her, still remember her, and sometimes childishly still imagine, still wonder if she would be proud of me for what I'm doing. And while I think that I owe it to myself to keep doing what I'm doing right now, I sometimes even feel like I owe it to her to continue doing what I'm doing. She kept telling me to care more about myself and to be happy and all that. But I feel like what makes me happy is to, to change something. Make sure that this culture and this religion and this, this, this whole system this whole behavior that was so cruel to her and to so many other people, that people distrust this culture, this whole influence a little bit more. It is a win to me if I can influence just one mind, open some eyes and make them see the world differently in a better way, not in a deluded, oppressive way, which makes people crazy. I haven't been able to just focus on living my life, especially after my aunt was brutally killed by some sick man. And I don't think I will ever be able to simply focus on living my life. That's just not my understanding of the world. And there are ideas, there are systems, there are monsters in this world that don't let you just live your life. And somebody has to do something about that, right? This is for a woman who died so young just because she wanted to be happy and free. 
I know she can't hear me. I know she can't see any of this. But I believe she would appreciate this if she could. Thank you and stay away from Islam.